Faculty from the Ford School of Public Policy, the Ross School of Business, and the LSNA Departments of Political Science and Economics have come together to form a cube called Combating Vote Selling, a field experiment in the Philippines. Representing the team today are Professor Steven Leiter and Ford School graduate student Nico Ravanilla. We'd like to tell you about our project that we did in the Philippines on combating vote selling. Vote selling is pervasive in developing democracies, particularly among the poor. In the Philippines, it's an open secret. I'm a Filipino voter, and I have had the first-hand experience of being handed money for my vote. I'm also part of a local political clan in the Philippines, and so I've had the uh, first-hand insider's point of view of how the vote buying works. Now, there's a mix of ways by which vote buying happens. And one way, and that which we have seen in the field in this past year, is when politicians have peddled around rather brazenly, sample ballots is tabled with money, giving it to voters with the hopes that voters would exchange it with their votes out of sense of moral reciprocation or obligation. And uh, we think this is bad because it undermines democratic institutions, it leads to poor public service delivery, and it's often associated with corruption. So what has been done about this in the past? So most of the past efforts to try and combat vote selling have involved persuasive or educational campaigns put on by activists or non-governmental organizations. So trying to bring to light that if you vote for candidates who are buying votes, they're likely to be corrupt and, and poor uh, representatives of the government. And so the campaigns have argued to you know, not accept money, or if you accept money, don't be blinded by the money, or take the bait but not the hook. Unfortunately, most of these interventions have been shown to be largely ineffective. And so when MQ brought uh, Dean, Alan, Nico, and I together, we started thinking about uh, what could be done that might be more effective. And this was very exciting for me. Dean, Alan, and Nico uh, have been studying problems like this uh, for a number of years. Most of my research has been in laboratory experiments on decision making. And so I initially uh, thought about my past research on the effect of promises. In the lab, I've been able to show, as, as others have, that asking someone to make a promise can have a substantial effect on their choices, and in particular, make them make more more moral, more pro-social choices. And so we started to ask, is it possible that we could take this to the field and ask voters to promise either not to accept money or that even if they accept money, to vote their conscience? And so we got very excited about this as a potential intervention. And so we started to ask, how can we put this into practice? How can we take it to the field? So surrounding the May 15th elections this year in the Philippines, we went to one of the larger cities, in fact, my hometown, and did a baseline survey before the elections, and immediately after, we did a post-election survey. Now, at baseline, we asked our respondents their voting intentions. We wanted to focus on three particular elective offices for the mayor, for vice mayor, and city council. And so we asked our respondents to basically rate the politicians or the candidates on a seven-point Likert scale according to whether they find them to be extremely unfavorable or extremely favorable. Now, we've also shown all of them a short video clip that basically told them to vote for someone who's honest, upright, competent, and who's not going to buy their votes. Now, for a randomly selected subset of our respondents, we've shown them one of two promise intervention. So we basically requested them or asked them if they'd be interested in making one of two promises. Like what Steve said, one of the promises was to not take money from any politicians, and the other promise was to, to vote according to your conscience, even if you ended up taking the money. Now, so the elections, well, so just to make the promises a little more salient, we also asked them to write down the words, at least for those who've actually did make the promise to write down the words, I promise, on the iPad app survey that we were using in the field. After the elections, we revisited the uh, respondents immediately and asked them who they actually voted for. And for these set of results that we're going to show you, we wanted to focus on how those set of actual people they voted for differed from who they initially reported as their favorites. And so what did we actually find out? So we had a total of 900 participants, so 300 in the control treatment that 
only had the survey and saw the persuasive video, and then another 300 that saw the video and then were asked to promise uh, not to accept any money, and then finally 300 that were asked to promise to vote according to their conscience. And so what we're hoping is that these promise interventions will reduce this vote selling behavior, but we need a measure of what would it look like to reduce this vote selling. So as Nico mentioned, we have a measure of who was their initially favored candidate and who do they report actually voting for. You would expect most people to vote for who was their initially favored candidate, but if they're selling their vote to candidates who give them money, then perhaps you might expect to see people voting for someone different from their initial favorite. And so that's what we constructed was a measure of, uh, did the respondent to the survey say that they voted for someone who wasn't their initial favorite? And so if we see a reduction in this vote switching from asking someone to make one of these promises, then we're gonna see this as evidence in favor of a reduction in vote selling. So first, um, we took the three different races we're looking at, mayor, vice mayor, and city council, and asked if you were being asked to make one of these promises, did you v switch your vote in at least one of these three races? And we see in the baseline where all they saw was the education of video, roughly about 60% of people switched their vote in at least one of these races. When we turn to the, uh, the promise not to accept any money, we see that actually there was about a 10% reduction in people switching their votes. And so it seems like this promise was actually successful in reducing vote switching. On the other hand, the promise to vote your conscience seemed to have no real effect compared to the control. But we can unpack things a little bit further. The mayor and vice mayor races actually work very differently from the city council races. There's both fewer candidates and most importantly, a lot more money being offered by these candidates. And so if we look at the mayor and vice mayor races together, we get a slightly different picture. Here, the promise not to accept any money has very little effect compared to the baseline, whereas the promise to vote your conscience even if you accept money actually made things worse, increasing vote switching and so therefore vote selling by about 10%. However, if we look at the city council election, here where there's much smaller amounts of money being offered is where we see the majority of our reduction. This is where we're getting the 10% reduction in vote switching compared to the baseline. And so if we take these results all together, we can see that asking people to vote not to accept money does seem like it can successfully reduce vote selling, at least in certain elections, in particular in the elections where a lot less money is being offered. It's you know, somewhat of a big ask to ask someone not to accept money, particularly when they're poor, and so it seems like our respondents were most willing to turn down the money when it was relatively small amounts of money being offered. On the other hand, uh, asking someone to vote their conscience mm -hmm. even if they accept money seems to make things worse, particularly in the mayor and vice mayor races where there's about five to 10 times as much money being offered compared to the city council races. Now, we don't have direct evidence to why this is happening, but what a story that seems consistent to us is that it may be the case that people are more likely to accept money having made this promise because they think it won't affect them. I've made this promise to vote my conscience anyways, but it turns out that once you've accepted a, a large amount of money, it, it's very difficult not to be affected by this. So, so far we've been mostly focusing on the voters and how can we impact the voters. We also might want to see, is there a way to make candidates more responsive to voters? One of the things that m -Cube has allowed me to do as a graduate student is to pursue my dissertation, which is a field experiment, this time asking politicians to promise more actually more like committing to become competent and honest leaders in the future. So the Philippines is by far the only country in the world that popularly elects youth council members. And so here I have the respondents for my field experiment, youth uh, displaying their coat of arms symbolizing their commitment to lead in order to serve with the hopes that perhaps making that commitment will make them more likely to perform better once they are in the youth council. So, in conclusion, what have we actually learned? So we started off with this observation that in the Philippines, as well as in many developing democracies, we see this rampant vote buying and vote selling that leads to less effective government and increased corruption. And we knew that the past interventions, mostly using education and persuasion, were largely ineffective. And once MQ brought the four of us together and our various different uh, backgrounds and disciplines, we decided, could we have an intervention that was more effective by asking people to make a promise not to sell their vote? Based on the results, it seems like, yes, at least for some of the elections, asking people to promise not to accept any money is a successful way of reducing vote selling. 
Additionally, and, and very exciting from my perspective, we were able to take insights from previous laboratory experiments and demonstrate that they extend to the field and kind of have an impact on real important decisions for people. But a surprising result from our research was that while promises are very powerful tools, you want to be careful what you ask someone to promise so that you're making something better rather than worse. Thank you. Thank you.